guys, Chef Kevin Belton here. You know, if memory serves me correct, Alexandra, Peyton, Dave, Chris, all of our weather experts, I thought they used the word cool recently. So I decided, oh, cool, what about chili? So today we're gonna do a chili verde. Now, verde is green, and I hope I'm pronouncing that the right way. Apparently, Monica didn't look at me funny, so it must be right. So basically, what I'm doing to start with, I want to roast off. These are tomatillos. Now, if you've never seen a tomatillo, they look like a tomato. I'm, I guess they're in a tomato family, but they're totally different than a tomato. But in the grocery store, you see them with this skin. And then if you just peel this skin off, which just comes right off, there you have the tomatillo. Okay, so basically what I've done, I've rinsed them, split them in half. I also have jalapenos. I also have uh, Anaheim's, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, not Anaheim's, poblano. And basically I've taken the seeds out of the poblanos, cut them in half, same thing with the jalapenos. Now, what I have, I've set the broiler on high. And what I want to do, I wanna put these under the broiler for the skins to blister then we'll peel the skins off. Now, if you don't want to use your broiler, you can put them in the oven and it'll take about 20, 25 minutes, but it'll be the same process. We want this to roast so we can get those skins off. That way we can make our verde sauce. So let's get these in the oven. Hi guys, I've got our peppers roasted. Now the whole reason for doing this is to blister that skin, plus it gives them a roasted flavor. Now I've peeled off the skins, off the jalapenos, off the poblanos, but if you notice the tomatillos, okay, I left that skin on, okay, and that's fine. You know, tomatillos, you know, people talk about, are they toxic to eat raw? No, they're just really, really bitter. So usually if you're using them any type of sauce, so you wanna go ahead and boil them, you can roast them like I did in the oven. And all we're gonna do now is take all of our peppers and put them in our fruit processor because we want this to blend. Now, you know, always let them cool off a little bit before you try to peel them. You know, take the skins off. If you want, you can put them in a paper bag or a plastic bag. That way they'll steam and that makes them easier to get the skins off. So here I had about two pounds of tomatillos. I had a couple of poblanos. I did three jalapenos. And of course, you know, it depends on your taste and how spicy you want it, how much do you use, okay? We put some of the uh, jalapenos in now for the salsa, but we could also put some of those jalapenos in, you know, fresh when we're cooking the chili. So let's go ahead and get this on high. We want this to get nice and smooth. I take it you can hear how loud that was, okay? Basically, we want this to get nice and smooth. So if, if you come and look in this gang right quick, all right, here, this is where it starts. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and season this, okay? Because we're gonna season the chili later on with things like cumin and oregano, salt and pepper, and things like that, all right? But I wanna get this totally, totally smooth. Now, if you wanna leave this a little choky, yeah, you can because it's going in the chili. But look how much flavor that's gonna to add to the chili, all right? I'm gonna puree this a little more because I want this nice and smooth going into our chili. So while I'm pureeing this, you guys go take a little break. Next time I see you when we come back, I'm gonna have my pot on the stove and we're gonna get our pork. Oh, this chili verde, oh, it's gonna be so good. We'll see you in a little bit. Hi guys, Chef Kevin Felton here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, October, it starts to get cool. We hope. Yeah, we hope it starts to get cool. Because the first week of October is chili month. All right, chili week, I should say. Celebrating the month where it gets cool. So I'm gonna do a white bean chili. Now, I've started sauteing some things off. I've started with a little onion 
and some diced jalapeno. I wanted that to saute down. I wanted it to get caramelized, get some color on those onions. All right. Now the jalapenos, I took out the seeds. Okay, split it, took out the seeds. You can leave the seeds in if you want, but let's put in a little bit of cilantro and green onion now. I am gonna give another little squirt of olive oil in the pan because we're gonna get in some garlic, all right? And you know the great thing about garlic, garlic doesn't need to saute too long. So, you know, we love garlic. So how much garlic do you wanna put in? Totally up to you, all right? Monty, should I do the rest? Yeah. All right. Oh, yes. The aroma smells so good. Now, I'm going to turn this down just a bit. Let me show you what I'm using for seasoning, okay? What I have, I have a little smoked paprika, a little white pepper, a little bit of my Creole seasoning, little salt, a little bit of cumin powder, and a little bit of oregano. Okay, so we're going to get our seasonings in. And you know what's nice is, I put the seasoning in now, okay? And we can always, as this cooks, taste it and adjust it, all right? Now, chicken stock. I'll put a little chicken stock in. I want that little bit to just deglaze the bottom of the pan where we had all of these flavors starting to saute. Uh, yes. And our beans. I am using a small white bean. Now I'm using a canned bean. I didn't rinse them, but I did put them in a colander and let them drain, okay? I wanted them to drain. So let's get our beans in. Gang, if you've never cooked with cumin, I tell you what, the smell of cumin is incredible. Cumin just has a great, wonderful smell. So now that our beans are in, we've given that a good stir. Let's go ahead and get in our chicken stock. It does smell good, doesn't it? Now, our stock is in. All right, give this a nice stir to get this all mixed in. Now we want to let this come up to a boil, then I'm going to let it simmer. You want to let this simmer for at least 30 minutes. You know, this is one of those dishes where the longer it cooks, the more the flavors blend together. Once we let this simmer, we're going in with some green chilies. I have some chicken that I've just cubed up, that I've already cooked. And I have some fresh corn that I cut off the cob. So we need this to simmer. So this is gonna simmer for at least 30 minutes. Then we could get the rest of those ingredients in. Gang, I know I keep saying this, but the smells, the smells are so good. You can look in the pot and see how everything is just cooking. They've all come together. The beans have started to fall apart a little bit but that's okay. So now let's finish this off. Now, I'm using chicken that I had already cooked, okay? We could have started with a little oil in the pan, saute your raw chicken, take it out, then start sauteing the onions and all. Here, I had already sauteed my chicken and I had some left over. So now we just have to put it in. And basically, as soon as our chicken heats all the way through, this is gonna be ready, which won't take very long at all, okay? Now, also, I have a couple of cans of green chilies. We'll get those green chilies in. And last but not least, some corn. Now, this is fresh corn that I cut off the cob, okay? Um, I also keep frozen corn. If you can't have fresh ingredients for vegetables, go with the frozen because the freezing process now, they take a product and it's flash frozen so the freshness is still there. But this is right cut off the cob. So we'll get our corn in.
Oh, look how good that looks. And yes, I did sneak a little taste earlier to see how it was, and it is absolutely fine. It has a great, great flavor. So now, let's get our bow. Oh, man, the only thing this reminds me of is makes me want to put on a sweater. But we aren't quite there yet. Not yet. But we're going to get there. I can go ahead and turn this off. Hey, let's finish this off. I have a little shredded jack cheese. We'll do a little shredded cheese here. Let's do a little dollop of sour cream. Right on top. Get in there. There we go. Yeah. Let's do a little more sour cream right there on top. And a little bit of green onion just on top there. All right. How is that for a nice wintry dish so i can't wait like monica says we hope the weather gets cool because this is a recipe that oh is going to bring warmth to your belly try it i really think you like it thank you for so much for cooking with me today for wwl tv i'm chef kevin belton and we'll see you soon hopefully on a nice chilly day Chef Kevin Belton here, and you know, today is National IPA Day. Now, I'm not a drinker, okay, but I know a little bit about wine and beer and spirits and things like that. Indian Pale Ale, that's what IP stands for. Basically, it's a beer that's hoppy, okay? So today, I decided to make an IPA chili. Yes, we're going with the chili. We're going with a little spiciness, okay? And I started already because I wanted to get some things done so you could see this entire process, okay? First thing I did, now you guys, you guys know I love bacon. I sauteed some bacon off, okay? I got it to where it's, some of it's crispy, some of it's not crispy, but I wanted that dripping from the bacon, okay? Because I took the bacon out, and then in the pan, I went with onion, and I'm using a sweet onion, like a Vidalia. I have red and orange bell pepper, all right? Now, here is diced jalapenos, and right here are poblanos and Anaheim chilies. Now, what I did with those, okay, I took the Anaheims and the poblanos, put them on a roasting pan, and in my small oven here, I just put them under the broiler for about 20 minutes. Every five minutes, I turn them, drop them in a paper bag, rolled it down tight, and let them sit in that paper bag for another 15, 20 minutes. Basically what that does is it allows them to steam. You can just take them out, pull the skins right off. And I just put them on a cutting board, pull the skins right off, all right? And then took out the seeds, chopped them up, and that's what you're left with. That's why you can see how they look so different than the jalapeno, which is fresh, okay? So this is what I've had sauteing in the pan. Now I've had this in the pan. I'll just go ahead and throw these guys in. I've had these in the pan, sauteing. You can see the difference in the onion. We want them to get a little translucent. We want them to cook down, all right? And I tell you what, you can really smell the flavor from those bacon drippings. Now, I'm gonna shut this off for a second. And before I, I, I move it, a little fresh garlic, okay? This is about eight cloves of garlic. And I'm not doing the full recipe. All right, but basically with this garlic, you know, this is going to cook for a while. So while the pan is hot, even when I turn the fire off, this garlic, because of the heat, it's going to open up. That flavor is going to come out of that garlic. Oh, I wish you all could smell this. Monica, you could smell that garlic, can't you? Uh -huh. Gosh, she hates it when I talk about her or talk to her. Because she's like, mm-hmm. So here, let's take this out of the pan. 
Oh, you guys will be able to see this in just a second. That's a lot. All right. All right. What you say there? That's a pot. That's a pot. I'm sorry. Take it out of the pot. I have a bad habit of calling pots, pans, calling them the same thing. Basically, now what we're going to do, we're using three meats, okay? First, I'm going in with some chuck that I've just basically cut it in, in like half inch pieces. And I just want that to quickly brown off, okay? Once this gets brown off, and you know, here, I'm going to just put a little drop of olive oil down in there. All right, just to get a little oil in the pan. And we're gonna do two other meats, okay? One thing here, I just have some ground meat. And here is a sweet Italian sausage. And basically, I've just taken it out of the case, okay? Now, what's important is, when you hear talk about sauteing the meats and all, basically, this is gonna cook for a couple of hours, all right? We want to brown off the chuck, but once that chuck gets browned off, I'm gonna go in with the ground meat and the sausage, and you're gonna see how, you know, you hear it talk about it's pink right now, and you wanna lose that pinkness. That means it's cooked all the way through, but I'll show you why we wanna do that, because that way you can get it crumbly, all right? Now, depending on how big a chunks of meat you like, I like to take the spoon and really break it up so the meat gets spread out throughout. So let's go ahead and get our ground meat in. Let's get our Italian sausage in, if it, if it wants to come. Come on. Don't be shy, hop on in. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about. How as we break this up, it's gonna make, it's gonna form like a little skin on the bottom where it first comes in contact with the pan. And you know, if you're making a full recipe, you might want to use a little larger pan than I'm using, okay? Use a nice Dutch oven. But look, look at the bottom. See how that, that's a different color? That's what was in contact with the bottom of the pan. So that's why we just want to kind of take a few minutes to break this up. You know, this could take anywhere two to three minutes, four to five minutes, just depending on how much you're doing, depending on how much area you have in the bottom of the pan, all right? But it's important to get this done. And the reason why it's important that they all the recipes always say you lose the paintness is because that way it gives that meat a chance to break up, all right? Because if you went with all the other ingredients, you have these two, maybe three or four chunks of meat in your chili. And you don't want that. You want that broken up. So that's why we just have to take our time to kind of get this broken up, all right? We're almost there. But let me show you what I'm going to season this with, okay? Now, you know, being a Louisiana guy, I usually always use my Creole seasoning. But you know, some friends from Texas and Oklahoma, they always tell me, hey, when you make chili, you can't make Louisiana chili. You have to make chili chili. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we always tend to put our own touch on things. So here... I'm using a few different things, okay? Right here, this is chili powder, all right? Now, my friends in Texas and Oklahoma, when they do chili powder, they use different types of chili powders. This is regular chili powder. This is a little cayenne pepper. I have cumin. This is ground, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, garlic powder, onion powder, a little smoked paprika. Now, you can use a smoked paprika or a hot paprika if you like, a little salt, and instead of black pepper, this is white pepper, all right? That's what I'm going to season with. And look in the pan. Mommy, give him a look in the pan. See how most of that pinkness is gone, all right? And you see how the meat is crumbly? That's why we want to take the time, because by the time we lose that pinkness, okay, it starts to break up. So now let's get our seasonings in. Oh, I tell you what, the flavors explode when these seasonings, all right, hit that heat. Oh, yeah. At this point, we can go ahead and put our bacon back in. And, you know, if you want to get the bacon crunchy, if you want to leave it 
a little to the tooth, that's fine. All right. Let's get our vegetables that we took out back in. And the moisture that the vegetables gave off, we're going to get that back in as well. So the whole point of taking out the vegetables that we sauteed was so we could get our meat browned off. That was the whole point of having to take the vegetables out of the pan. Now, if you choose, all right, you can do your vegetables in a separate skillet while your meat is browning off, and that way you don't have to worry about taking them out of the pan, putting them in a bowl for them to rest. You could just take them right from that skillet once they saute and go right in with the meat, okay? So let's get some other flavors in here, okay? Let me turn the fire down some. We're gonna go in with a little tomato sauce. Now I'm gonna put tomato paste in. And this might be one of the neatest tricks you ever see. With tomato paste, everybody always has a problem getting it out of the can. Open both sides of the can. Look, push it, take the bottom one off, Push it all the way through, and now all you do is grab the top piece. And that way you don't have to worry about running your finger around the can and maybe cutting your finger because that way it slips right out. I think that's one of the best tricks I ever learned from my mom that I watched her do that one day because she told me, hey, get the tomato paste out. And of course, I took my finger and cut it going around the rim right with it can was where the can cut open and she says no 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 don't do that let me show you and there you go I learned so we're gonna do a little chicken stock now I have about a half a cup of chicken stock here but you notice I put it into the can that had the tomato sauce just that way we could rinse this can out really good and now one of the stars of the show the IPA now a Beta Brewing Company is a local brewery. It's, it's on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain, across from the city of New Orleans. All right, in Abita Springs, Louisiana. I'm using their Big Easy IPA. Now, remember, I told you IPA is a hoppy beer, right? The reason I'm using a Big Easy IPA, because this has more of a citrusy, kind of a sweet side to it. And with that tomato paste, I like that little sweetness, that little citriness to go here. So let's get our IPA in. And you know, I, I, I gotta tell a story on a friend. I uh, went up to a, their office to judge a chili cooking contest. And I'm tasting them and they're good. And all of a sudden there was one I got to. And as soon as I tasted it, my I just shook because it had such an alcohol flavor. Well, he, uh, uh, one of the guys at the office told me he had his chili cooking all day long. He had his wife watch it. When he got home from work, he grabbed the beer for himself out of the fridge, then decided to pour one into his chili. But he shut his chili off, put it, let it cool, put it in the refrigerator, so that beer never had a chance to cook out, all right? So here, this is going to cook for a couple of hours so that really that beer, that alcohol flavor that can be strong and overpowering if you taste it now, by cooking long, that alcohol flavor cooks out. So make sure when you cook with alcohol, especially something like this, you give it time to, to cook. The flavor will still be there, but that strong alcohol flavor won't be there. That's why anytime you see a chef make a sauce with white wine, or any kind of wine, okay? When we deglaze a pan, you notice it's really hot and we let it reduce a little bit because we want that flavor but not that strong alcohol taste. So let's get in a couple of beans. And I haven't drained these. Here I have some black beans. Now, I chose to use black beans and kidney beans, all right? You can do any kind of bean you want. Typically you find kidneys but often you might find some uh, garbanzo beans. Um, you might find some chilies with pinto beans in them. You know, go with whatever bean you particularly like. Oh, baby, this looks so good. Now, like I said, taste this now and it'll have one flavor. And you know, that may be the great thing. If you taste this right now, it's gonna have a complete different taste. 
taste it 30 minutes from now, you taste the flavors able to start to develop. Taste it an hour, and those flavors de develop more. Because remember, all those vegetables and those peppers we sauteed earlier, those flavors are going to meld with the flavors from the meat, the flavors from the beans. Everything's going to come together really, really nice. So, you know, you always hear chefs talk about flavors developing. Something like this that's going to cook for a while. Taste it now and taste it in stages and you see that. So let me show you what it looks like after a couple of hours. Now, I... Okay, don't get on that burner, baby. All right? Oh, yeah. Look how good that looks. Doesn't that look great, gang? So let me get a bowl. Get a nice ladle. Come on, Spoon, you get over there. Let's see if we can put this right in the bowl and not get our bowl all dirty. There we are. Now, look, how about, this is a little shredded cheddar that I just shredded. How about some cheddar cheese on it? We could do a little bit of thinly sliced green onions on it. How about a little dollop of sour cream right on the top, all right? And you know, to serve it, hey, you could serve it with cornbread, crackers, some corn chips, all right? You can take the corn chips and crumble them on the top if you want. You can take the cornbread. If you want, cut the cornbread, stick it in the bowl, then lay a little chili in, and that way it absorbs into the bread, all right? So try this recipe, and I really, really, really think you're gonna like it. So celebrate National IPA Day. Even if you're not a drinker like Monica and I, hey, we can still cook with it and make it taste good, all right? So keep washing those hands mask up stay safe thank you for cooking with me today for wwl tv i'm chef kevin belton and we will see you soon